Okay, so I think we uh, finished in this topic. Uh, hardware TLB. I think we stopped at TLB. Translation uh, uh, look aside buffer. So the idea of paging is uh, it allows us as so a review. It allows us to uh, specify the size of uh, the memory allocation, fixed size memory allocation, so that we can minimize uh, external fragmentation. So you have uh, a process will require uh, a certain number of pages, and this number of pages will be mapped to. Uh, the physical memory okay, frames. Okay. And the idea here is uh, a logical address or a virtual address is given by a page number and a page offset. Okay, that's the idea. And we have this uh, data structure called the page table. Okay. So the logical address will have the page number and the offset. And the page number will be an, uh, a lookup or an index in the page table which specifies the base address of the physical address and then it's added to the offset and you got the actual location in the physical memory. Okay, so it's, it's an example. So uh, in the programmer's perspective, the memory that a program is using is contiguous but they are actually split into pages and the page table is the one that maps the pages to the actual physical memory. So, uh, uh, what the programmer sees is contiguous allocation, but in the actual physical memory, uh, the, the different pages may be located in different parts or separated in different or distributed in the physical memory. Okay. So, here's another example uh, of uh, frame uh, of paging, okay, as you can see here. So you have uh, this part uh, mapped to this uh, part here. So that's the idea. So, okay, so we need to have a list of three frames wherein we're going to allocate the, or we're going to uh, place the, uh, to map, okay, to map the uh, page number to a particular uh, frame, uh, frame, frame number. As you can see here, so you have the free frame list, right? and these are the pages. So initially, uh, empty. So uh, you run a new process, and initially, uh, you are able. Uh, the process has declared that it needs uh, four pages, and the operating system system maintains a free frame list. And when this process is loaded, the page table is created, and the mapping is made. So as you can see here, the free frame list was uh, reduced in size and you have only one remaining free frame. Okay. Okay. Assuming that the other parts here are already used. Okay, so how are, uh, uh, how are page tables implemented? So usually we have uh, 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 a TLB, okay, which allows us to uh, have a faster search for the mapping of the uh, page number to the frame number. Right? So it's basically TLB is basically a cache that allows you to get the immediately get the uh, frame number right? given the page number. So you see here the arrow represents simultaneous access or parallel access. So we skip this so protection. Okay, so a form of protection. Okay, uh, so, in the operating system, uh, we can have several processes and if you have implemented paging in the operating system, how do you ensure protection, memory protection? How do you ensure that one process does not access the memory of another process? Right? So, uh, in paging, in paging systems, to do that, you associate a protection bit. And this protection bit tells you whether uh, uh, the operations, what operations can be done on that particular memory location. So you have uh, this uh, bit, read, write, read only, execute. Right? And 
a valid and invalid bit is attached to each entry in the page table. So the basic structure of the page table is you have the page number and the corresponding frame number. For to, to, to add additional protection, you add another column for the valid and invalid bit, which is basically just one bit, right? So a valid, uh, uh, when the valid invalid bit is set to valid, it indicates that the associated page is in the processes logical address space, right? And uh, it's just a legal page, meaning you can read and write read and read, or depending on the permission that you set it. Right? And then for the invalid, uh, that means that that particular page is not part of the processes logical address space. Right? And when you access a uh, memory location that is not in the page table or in the logical address of the process, that is an exception or a trap. So you have a page fault, for example. So you see here an example. So this is uh, the page. These are the pages required by a process. Okay. Uh, it says here that <coughs> the process, okay, the process requires up to ten thousand four hundred sixty-eight bytes only. Okay. So if you if you write a program, when you write a program, it will have variable sizes, okay. and when the program is loaded, the total memory location, memory, the amount of memory needed by a process is uh, up to 10,468 only. But since we are using paging, we are using paging, uh, the sizes of the pages of each page is fixed size. You get the idea? So despite the requirement of the process being only 10,468, but since we implement paging, okay, it will require up to 12 to 87. So it will require uh, six pages. So this one will be, from, there will be some parts of this page that will not be used. Right? Part of what you call internal fragmentation. Right? And in the page table, so you have here the page number and you have the frame number and the value. So uh, it shows here that uh, zero pages, zero to five, are valid pages, meaning these are part of the of this process, of this process logical address space. Okay? And six and seven are not part, so it's set to I for invalid. Are right, you get the idea? And the problem is the complication will happen here uh, in this uh, in this mapping. Page five is set to valid and it is mapped to frame number nine. However, when you access, when a process accesses memory above this value, it will also trigger a page fault because it is not part of the process. You get the idea? Because this is kumbaga, over allocation ito, right? because of the fixed size pages. Right? So, uh, shared pages, uh, I think, I did that in some last time. So, this allows you to share data. So when a process is running, for example, you have the text editor and you have three processes or three users connected to a remote system. Let's say, walang GUI, lahat sila gumagamit ng Vim. Okay? So they all execute Vim and in the physical memory, you only have uh, one instance of the Vim process okay, located in these frames and then uh, what is unique for each process will be the data. For example, the data being edited. Because the rest, same, but they have different data. Right? Let's say this one is editing a C program. This one is editing a JavaScript program. This one is editing uh, some other program. So that's the idea. Now, how do we structure the page table? So, as you see here, uh, a page table is nothing more than a, a lookup table. Not, nothing more than a lookup table. But how is this implemented? So, the idea is to uh, use uh, a hierarchical structure. Okay? So, there are uh, several approaches to this. Why is, why is hierarchical structure needed? Okay? Because the page table usually will occupy uh, a memory area. Right? This will occupy a memory area, and if you don't structure the 
uh, the page table, it will uh, occupy uh, a lot of memory. Right? So for example, uh, if you have a 32-bit logical address space, so basically you have, let's say, an Intel uh, 30, uh, x86 32-bit, okay? and so you have 32 bits for the logical address, and you have a 4 kilobyte size, 2 to the 12 of uh, the page size. And the page table would have 1 million entries, right? So, kung ganyan yung, ano mo, kung ganyan yung uh, architecture mo, and ito yung size ng page table mo, kakain ng maraming memory yung yung uh, page table. Okay? So, you have to uh, reduce that by introducing uh, hierarchical and other techniques. Right? So, the idea of hierarchical page table is basically to uh, provide additional indirection right? instead of having one flat uh, one flat page table you create uh, uh, pointers in direction certain levels of indirection so you break up the logical address space into multiple page tables and a common technique is uh, a two level page table so you page the page table that's the idea so here, here is how it looks. So you have the physical memory, and the logical address will have will be divided into several parts. Uh, certain parts will represent the uh, page table, the outer page table, and some parts will also be represent, representing the inner page table. So this is uh, what happens uh, in this example, right? So for example. So you have a 32-bit machine with okay, so one kilobyte page size. So hahatiin mo yan sa yung isang logical address, hahatiin mo sa dalawa. So the first component will be the page number and the, a page offset will be consisting of 10 bits. So 32 bits yung in total. Now since the page table is page, itong page number na to will be further divided into uh, an outer page number and an inner page number. Right? So, paano yan? So, uh, okay, so this is how it will look like. So, the logical address will be divided into three parts. So, the actual offset, the, the index to the inner page table, and the index to the outer page table. So, this is uh, the division. So, isang 32-bit value lang yan, and then divided into these parts, okay? So this is called a forward, forward map page table. So pag may kailangan i-access sa memory, una, pupuntahan mo muna yung outer page table and then you move into the uh, inner page table and then you get to the actual uh, location, okay? Now, what if you have 32-bit, okay? Logical address space. So, minsan, pag, uh, actually, yung sa 64, yung 32-bit, okay lang na two level, okay? For 64-bit, uh, masyadong ano, kulang na yung two levels. So, it can still be further divided into three levels, okay? So, you have this division, okay? And uh, basically, this is how it's, it will look like, okay? So, you have three-level uh, paging scheme, okay? So, you have the inner page, the outer page, and the outer page is still... Uh, divided. Okay. So yeah, this this allows you to minimize uh bakit kailangan pag aralan yung structure ng page table. This will allow you to minimize the amount of memory that is needed to store the page table. Okay? So yun yung purpose nitong uh, hierarchical uh, structure. So another option is to use a uh, hash table, okay? So the virtual page number is hashed into a page table, and this page table contains a chain of elements hashing to the same location. So I'm, I hope you are all familiar with hashing, diba? So sa hashing, meron tayong, uh, usually we have a key, and then you have the value, okay? And dito, sa collision, there are two ways to uh, resolve collision in hash table, diba? So meron ang mga linear probing, tapos meron ang new chaining. So dito, you have a virtual page number and what is what it does is meron kang link list doon na naka-chain doon na nagha-hash sa same value given the key, right? So each element doon sa chain na yon will have the virtual page number, 
the value of the map page frame and a pointer to the next element. So, ang gagawin nyo yan is hahanapin mo lang yung corresponding page uh, frame number for that particular virtual page number. Okay? So, ito yung mangyayari. So, you have a logical address. So, you have the page number here. And then, you have the offset. Okay? And then, what will happen is the page number will be passed to a hash function and it will be uh, looked up in the hash tables. It will get a value here. And then, na-traverse niya lang to para mahanap yung hinahanap niyang frame number and then, yun yung gagamitin niya para dito. Okay? So, because it's possible that, it's possible, remember, sa paging, it's possible that a page will map to the same frame number, especially if that frame number is not uh, used. Okay? So, yeah. Pwedeng ma-reuse yung isang location dito ng several processes. The last one is inverted page table. Yung idea naman ng inverted page table, uh, meron ka ng listahan. Kung baga, i-reverse mo lang. Ang, ang, ang traditional na page table is you have the first column as the page number and then the second column as the uh, frame number. Okay? Dito, hindi. Uh, lahat ng ano, kung baga, sa buong system, lahat ng memory area mo, meron ka ng entry doon. And then, ilulook up mo na lang yun, kaso kailangan mo ng tinatawag na process identifier. Okay? So, ang logical address mo will, be, will consist of a process identifier, and then you have uh, this page number here, and then the offset. So, ang nagawin mo, kaya siya inverted page table, kasi nandito na lahat, okay, lahat ng possible, lahat ng possible uh, pages na pwedeng i-map sa physical memory. Nandito na lahat yon. Tapos, given ka lang ng process ID, okay, lulook up niya yan dun sa page table, ah, makakita niya, uh, itong frame na to, this frame number, is, uh, uh, this frame entry is used by this page number for this process, and yun yung ilulook up niya, makakuha siya, makakuha siya ng frame number, yung I, okay, yun yung I na yan, and then, yun yung gagamit sa physical address. You get the idea of the inverted page table? Traditionally, yung first column mo, yun yung page number. Second column mo, yun yung frame number. Dito, ang ginawa, lahat ng possible pages na pwede mo ilagay sa physical memory, yan na yung entry sa page table mo. And global ito, lahat ng processes ginagamit ito. Kaya kailangan ng process identifier. Unlike sa, sa, sa iba, uh, sa ibang implementation, itong page table na to ay, ano, uh, specific for each process right specific for each process but this one for the inverted page table you have a global uh, a global view of the page table right so yeah so we have uh, examples here right but we'll focus on the intel kasi ito yung ginagamit natin sa ano sa computer natin traditional computer so We'll discuss the some of the overview. Paano ba ini implement yung paging sa Intel 32 bit sa 64 bit? So these are dominant industry chips, right? So sa sa Intel, so it's very important to remember that Intel processors support or support both segmentation and paging, right? Dalawa segmentation sa paging, right? And uh, each segment can be uh, 4 gigabyte. So remember, iba yung segmentation natin, meron tayong segment register, and we have the limit register. And the maximum here, okay, for our IA32, 32 bit is 4 gigabyte, yung size ng isang, ano, size ng isang segment. Okay? Kasi 32 bit yung, ano, yung uh, limit register. And uh, up to 16,000 segments per process, okay? and uh, divided into two uh, partitions. So you have the LDT, local descriptor table, and you have the uh, global descriptor table, GDT. Uh, dun sa pinakita natin example, kung paano siniset yung GDT, dun sa tutorial. Okay. So yan, ito yun. And the CPU generates logical addresses. Okay. And so yung, log yung logical address, ng Intel 32-bit divided into three parts. 
Una, yung segment selector, okay? And then you have, ano ba to? Uh, is the page number, okay? I'm, uh, de, ito ay sa, ano na to? This is for the linear address, okay? Uh, ito yung tinda natin. So the CPU will generate a logical address, and then you have the segmentation unit, which will generate the linear address, and the linear address will be passed to the paging unit and the actual uh, physical address, right? So this is important. This is quite unique dito sa uh, sa Intel processor, kasi traditionally we discuss natin separate ni yung segmentation and paging. Pero sa dito, magkasama. Kung baga, dadaanan niya yung buong process. Lahat ng generate na process na, na address ng ano, ng isang uh, sa, sa Intel processor ay dadaan sa segmentation unit and then if you create the linear address and then saka pa yung mangyayari yung paging. Okay? So, ito yung tinatawag na linear address. So the linear address given to the paging unit and basically this is what happens. Ito yung pinaka flow. Lahat ng uh, addressing scheme sa Intel, ganito yung mangyayari. Okay, this is a uh, linear address. And for the segmentation part, so meron kang logical address. Pupunta yan sa segmentation part and sa segmentation part merong uh, selector okay, na maglulook up doon sa global descriptor table. And that selector uh, will be added to the offset and you get the 32-bit linear address. So, ito yung linear address. So, yung logical address, papasok dito, dalawang parts yan. You have the selector and then you have the offset. Pag nakuha mo na yung base, i-add mo na yan and you get the 32-bit linear address. Okay, so... Uh, Okay. So, yun lang tayo. Diretso lang tayo dun sa ano, paging. So, this is the entry to the, uh, as I showed last time, this is the entry to the global descriptor table. We specifies the uh, addresses okay, for the segment have the granularity, etc. So this is that is this this is the part, right? And uh, after producing the 32-bit linear address, that will be passed to the uh, paging part, right? So uh, so what's the nakuha na yon? Pupunta na yon sa paging and Sa 32-bit architecture, there are three, three, uh, three level, uh, two level paging. Okay? So you have the outer page directory, and you have the inner page directory, and then you have the actual offset on the page table. Okay? So uh, on the page. So example. Uh, So this is the entry for the page table. So bawat page, this is the page, okay? We'll have uh, is it present, okay? Ito yung mga values sa uh, ano and then you have the valid bit or uh, invalid bit which is the dirty bit here, okay? And uh, this is the page directory and you have pointers to the location of the page directory. Okay? So this is basically uh, this. Okay. So when you write an operating system, you have to initialize uh, segmentation and then initialize paging by setting up the page uh, table for the particular process or for the kernel itself. Okay. So. Yung addressable memory sa ano sa 32 bit is uh, up to 4 gigabyte of memory, okay? So kung 32 bit uh, kung 32 bit yung system mo, uh, you have addressable up to 4 gigabyte of memory. However, 
you can actually add more memory. Right? So kahit 32 bit yung system mo, you can uh, access memory okay? uh, greater than 4 gigabytes. Kasi yung limit di ba yung yung address register natin 32 bit. So 2 to the 32 mga eh, 4 gigabyte yun yung pwede mong i-address. But using a, a page address or this actually physical address extension or PAE, this will allow you to access okay, more than 4 gigabyte of memory. So kahit 32 bit yung system mo, pwede mong gawing 8 gig or, or greater okay, using the uh, physical or page address extension PAE. So some kernels, pag halimbawa 32 bit yung ano mo, yung yung system mo, pwede mong gawing 8 gig yung RAM by using a kernel that supports physical address extension. Basically, ang gagawin lang dyan is it will further it will further uh, divide the page directory para mas marami kang ma-access. Okay, get na idea? So, ang purpose natin ng itong mapping na to is sa perspective ng programmer, feeling niya uh, kaya niyang gamitin lahat ng memory ng system. Parang wala akong pakialam sa inyo basta ang alam ko kaya kong gamitin lahat ng memory ng system. Okay? So yun yung idea nito. So for 64-bit system, which is ito na yung modern, ano ngayon, modern systems. Okay? So yung page table niya, actually, di ba pag 32 bits, yung address size niya is 32 bits, 2 to the 32. Dito sa 64-bit, hindi niya actually ginagamit yung buong, hindi 2 to the 64, yung addressable range niya. Uh, it's only up to 2 to the 48. So, ibig sabihin, uh, sa 64-bit systems, yung possible, maximum na pwede mong i-address ay 2 to the uh, 48. Okay? So, yun yung limitation niya. Okay? And, basically, malaki na rin yan. Malaki na rin yan. Okay? And, it uses 4 uh, levels of paging. Okay? So, 4 levels of indirection. Okay, malino ba yan? So, yun. So uh, we'll skip ARM architecture. This is for, uh, for cell phones, but basically the same thing. So that basically ends uh, main memory. So the next part is uh, a detailed view of uh, what we call virtual memory. So ano ba yung idea ng virtual memory? Sabi natin yung virtual memory is it separates the view of the memory, meron kang logical memory, perspective ng programmer, and the actual physical memory, which is kung ano yung nandun sa hardware. Right? And uh, yung virtual memory, kaya sa tinatawag na virtual, kasi para sa namin mga kanina, uh, feeling mo, mga gamit mo lahat ng memory, na solo mo lang, pero uh, in the background, hindi pala. May, may cashier ka pala doon. Okay? So parang nilulawa ka ng operating system. Akala ko nagagamit ko lahat ng memory pero yung operating system pala, nilalawa ka lang. May, may cashier ka pala dun sa physical memory. Okay? So, yung, yung motivation nito is that uh, the code needs to be in memory to execute but the entire program is rarely used. If you have a very complex program, hindi, nang, hindi mo naman kailangan i-load yan sa memory lahat kasi yung ibang portions yan hindi naman gagamitin pa. Mahigit na idea. So examples of these codes are error codes uh, and uh, other data structures. An example of this is when you program kayo ng meron kayong array, gagawin nyo, lalakihan nyo yung array kasi baka maraming inputs, di ba? But, paano pag ang in-enter ng user ay less than the allocated uh, array? Okay? So, unused yung ibang memory area, okay? Sayang naman pag i-allocate mo kayo sa process, okay? So that's the idea. So, virtual memory allows the ability to execute uh, partially loaded programs and uh, each program takes less memory while running. Okay? So, kung mas masyadong malaki yung exe file mo, hindi naman kailangan i-load lahat sa memory yun. Okay? Mayroon lang portion na pwede na i-load mo na and then the rest, magkailangan lang sa kapo siya i-load. Okay? So, virtual memory, separation of user logical memory from physical memory. Uh, the logical address space can therefore be much larger than the physical address space okay? and uh, allows addresses, address spaces to be shared by several processes okay? space table kanina and it also allows more programs running concurrently so ngayon, sa panahon ngayon uh, 
pwede ka na mag-open ng maraming tab sa inyong Chrome browser. Diba? Na magraran pa rin siya. Hindi siya, mag, hindi siya mag error na dati kasi sa time namin, sabihin niya, out of memory. Hindi ka na makakapag-run ng program. Out of memory ka na. Out of physical memory ka na. But with virtual memory, you can open as many tabs as you like. Because, wala nang constraint sa amount of memory as long as meron kang disk, secondary storage, na malaki din. You can create as much mem as much tabs as you want. Okay? Kaso, may performance, ano na yan? May performance uh, uh, effect na yan. Okay? Kasi, which we will learn later because of uh, the transfer from the disk to memory. Okay? So, yun yung ibig sabihin niya. So, virtual address space is the logical view of how process is stored in memory. Usually start at address zero and uh, contiguous address until end of space. Right? And uh, two approaches for implementing virtual memory, we have uh, demand paging and demand segmentation. So, paano ba, yung, ano, paano ba gumagana yung virtual memory is larger than physical memory? Right? So, this is the virtual memory. So you have, this is paging, of course. Dito natin i-apply yung paging. So you have pages here. Okay? And then you have the memory map, the page table, and then the actual physical memory. And kahit malaki ito, kapasin nyo, malaki yung, ano, malaki yung virtual memory, maliit yung physical memory, gagana pa rin yung mga program mo kasi pwede kang gumamit ngayon ng backing store. Okay? can use a backing store para doon mo ilagay yung mga frames na hindi naman ginagamit. Okay? So, that's the idea of virtual memory. And, uh, let's review this, the virtual address space. Okay? Uh, usually, design logical address space for stock to start at max logical. So, ito yung, ito, when we're talking about this, we're talking about logical address. Okay? Uh, so, maximum stack grows downward, the heap goes, uh, uh, grows uh, upward, and then you have uh, the data and the code. Okay? So, this one enables sparse other spaces with holes left for growth and dynamically uh, linked left. So, kaya ganito yung design niya, kasi, uh, ito, merong, may butas dito. Okay? Kasi, uh, pwede, mag pwede yung gamitin yan, nung heap, Pwede ka maglagay dyan or pwede rin magamit dyan ang stock. Pag napuno na yan, mag-allocate ka ng bagong page para sa stock. Okay? And this area can be used for uh, sharing. Okay? Uh, sharing pages. Okay? So this is an example. Okay? So to illustrate this uh, concept, okay? so I've shown you before when, you, when, we, when we're using GDB, uh, This will create a process, and then okay, so, CDB. so we have a process, the signal process running, and uh, we attach a debugger to it while it is running. So, makakita nyo ngayon na nagraran yung uh, program and then we can use infoproc uh, mabims to allow us to uh, to view the mappings of the process. So, this is the address. Okay? And notice yun na yung size niya ay 1000 hex. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng 1000 hex? 1000 hex, ano yan? in decimal. This is 4 kilobytes. Okay? So, page size yan. So, itong code section, isang size. Itong data section, uh, isang size. Itong, uh, isang page size, ito uh, BSS. And then, you see the stack here, this location. Okay? 
and somewhere in the middle you have the shared libraries right so that's the, the implication of uh, paging right so yeah, you have shared pages if i run another instance of signal ito yung mangyayari pareho yung address na gagamitin nila okay so yung idea ng virtual memory is yun nga uh, you can have uh, basically unlimited amount of memory as long as meron ang backing store paano ginagawa yun so you have what we call demand paging right so you could uh, yung idea ng demand paging is hindi mo ilalagay lahat sa memory yung uh, kailangan na pages ng isang process. So, at, at this point in time, kailangan alam nyo na na pag nag ka ng program, ang gagawin ng operating system, aalamin niya kung ilang pages ng memory yung gagamitin ng process na yon. Paano malalaman yun ng ano? Paano malalaman ng operating system yun? Okay? Nakalagay yun doon sa executable format. Okay? So, nakalagay yun doon, may else format tayo, nakalagay doon yung mga sections kung gaano kalaki kung ilang pages ang kailangan ng process na yun. Okay? And, once na declare yon, mag-allocate ngayon yung operating system ng pages. Mag-create siya ng page table for that process. Okay? Kung ilan yung pages na kailangan ng process na yun. Okay? So, uh, time na ba? Okay, so, yun. Uh, ano lang, brief overview lang. Uh, yung demand paging, the idea here is Pag hindi mo kailangan, huwag mong ilagay sa memory. Okay. So, that's the idea. So, this will lessen the I.O., less memory, and faster response. Okay. So, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll go into the details of this uh, demand paging next. Okay? So, yun. Are there questions? So, pasunod yung tanong nyo yun sa araw sa papel. And then, you pass the paper. So, sana na kasunod kayo ng ano, sa 125. Right, so, I'm going to